About half a year ago, I made a poll asking, why did you lose your full combo? Of all 18 votes on the community post, it seems that the majority of you agreed that it was complete BS and it wasn't your fault, followed by those who lost it due to notifications or random phone calls. Look, I totally get it. Those kinds of scenarios are bound to happen to anyone, whether you lose your full combo due to lag, to frozen touchscreens, to swiping out of the game, or to notifications. I have experienced some of these many times in the past myself, so you are not alone. Luckily for you, I may have a solution for many of these problems you might have, along with some extra quality of life features and apps that you should totally take advantage of. So stick around as I guide you through how to set up and optimize your devices for the most smooth rhythm game experience possible. I will be splitting this video into two parts, one for iOS users and one for Android users. Be sure to jump to the relevant timestamps below to get the information most relevant to your device. But before we do that, I would like to share some general performance tips that are applicable to all devices. The main driver for poor performance in games comes down to heat. When your device heats up, your game may start to lag and feel sluggish. To prevent this from happening, you want to ensure that these things are true. Firstly, you want to make sure that you are not charging your device while you play. Keeping your device plugged in while playing will generate excessive heat and negatively impact your device's long-term battery life and performance. It may also cause the touchscreen to stop responding at times, so to ensure that your device operates normally, I would highly recommend unplugging your device before entering your game. You also want to make sure that your device is not on power saving mode, low power mode, or battery saver when you play. This behavior may vary between devices, but if you have a device with a 120Hz display, power saving mode may bring your device refresh rate down to 60Hz, which will make the touchscreen a lot less responsive in games. It will also limit your device's power, which may prevent your device from running smoothly. You also want to make sure your device is up to date. New updates can improve optimization and add extra features that can improve performance, such as the recently added game mode in iOS 18. Do be sure to regularly clear apps from your Recents menu. This will prevent other apps from eating into your game's resources. Regularly restarting your game can also prevent audio desync issues. There are some things that you can do in-game as well to keep your device performing as smoothly as possible. For example, if your game has interactive elements, music videos, or pop-up effects, it could be good to turn them off, as not only do they minimize distractions, but they also minimize the amount of objects the device has to render on the display, which puts less strain on the hardware inside your device. For Project Sekai specifically, you might want to consider turning all the music video options off. You might also want to turn off character interactions, along with the voices and skill pop-ups. If you like the pop-ups and the music videos, however, you can leave them on if you don't notice too much of a performance difference. But do know that 3D music videos can heat up your device and drain your battery faster. If you're on an iOS device, you might also want to turn off vibration. This feature has been known to crash devices in the past, so do turn this feature off to ensure that this does not happen. If your game supports 120Hz, having it on or off will depend on whether your device can handle it or whether you can handle the sensitivity. On Android, if your device supports 120Hz, I would turn this feature on. Not only will it make your touchscreen so much smoother, it will also make your touchscreen much more responsive. For Android, if your device can handle it without dropping frames, I find 120Hz to be a must. If you're on iOS, however, 120Hz will be more of a personal preference. In my experience, while 120Hz makes the display look a lot more fluid, it also tends to increase the touch sensitivity of the touchscreen, which may make hitboxes seem a lot smaller than they actually are. Unless you really value the smoothness of 120Hz, I recommend leaving this at the standard 60Hz option. Games with multiplayer features will also need a strong internet connection, so to ensure smooth gameplay, you want to make sure you are connected to a strong Wi-Fi network. With that out of the way, let's get iOS devices set up and ready to go. The first thing you want to do is to prevent notifications from showing up. To do this, you want to enable Do Not Disturb. Simply swipe down from the top right to access the control center. Then you want to go ahead and press the moon icon. This makes it so that incoming notifications will not display while you're in-game. And the chance that you forget to turn it on before you enter the game, you can also set an automation using Siri shortcuts to automatically toggle Do Not Disturb when you enter the game.
With Siri shortcuts, you can also set an automation to automatically turn off Do Not Disturb once you leave the game, so your notifications will still come through after your play session is over. You can also set different focus modes, like this gaming focus here. I don't really find a use for it though, so I usually will just stick to the default Do Not Disturb mode, but you can customize it with your own configurations. Next, let's make sure gestures and other system functions don't get in the way of your playing. Some games require or significantly benefit from the use of more than two fingers, and in those scenarios, multi-finger gestures will get in the way. These gestures can take you out of the game, which disrupts your gameplay. There are two ways to prevent this. You want to head into the Settings app and search for Gestures. Once you find this option, you want to go ahead and turn everything off. If you find the gestures useful and would like to keep them on, instead of disabling them, you can also use something called Guided Access. In addition to blocking multi-finger gestures, this will also prevent you from accidentally swiping out of the game. Simply search for Guided Access in the device settings and enable it. Then once you're in the app, you want to go ahead and triple tap your power button or home button to activate Guided Access. To minimize any sort of interference with the game, it is always recommended to turn this feature on once you enter a session. You can exit Guided Access by double pressing the power button and unlocking with biometrics, or triple pressing and unlocking with the passcode that you set earlier for Guided Access. Do note that you will not be able to take screenshots in Guided Access, so you will need to exit Guided Access first. It might also be good to perform a bit of maintenance for your device from time to time. For example, getting rid of apps that you don't use. Simply press and hold on an app icon and get rid of whatever you don't need. The way my system is configured is pretty minimal, and if you are configuring your device specifically for rhythm games, you may also want to do the same. On the topic of apps, there are also some rhythm game specific apps that you might want to try out. On the App Store, you can check out Sound Game Training, where you can load a YouTube video or screen recording into the app and then slow down the video and rewind for practicing. You should also take a look at Sonless if you haven't already. This app also lets you practice charts, as well as play custom charts. While this app isn't available on the App Store, you are able to install it through other means, so be sure to check out my Sonless guide if you want to try out this app. If you use your device specifically for gaming and want to inch out just that tiny bit of extra performance in your game, you can also look to turn some features off. For example, I don't use GPS-related services on my device, and my games don't need it either, so I have location services turned off. I also turn off background app refresh. This feature allows apps to run in the background, and I don't particularly need anything to run in the background, so you can choose to have this feature off entirely like I do, or choose which apps to keep on or off. Hopefully this should get your device set up and ready to go. If I missed anything, do let me know in the comments below. If you found this useful so far, do be sure to leave a like and subscribe. I'll be talking about Android devices next, so if you have your Apple device set up now, thanks for watching, but for those who want to learn some extra stuff about Android, let's keep going. Android users, let's get your device set up and ready to go. Let's start with minimizing notifications. Before entering a game, you want to go ahead and swipe down from the top to access the quick panel, then you want to look for the Do Not Disturb toggle. The purpose of this toggle is to prevent notifications from popping up while you're in-game. Do Not Disturb may behave differently on different devices. For example, take this old Android phone that I have. When I turn on Do Not Disturb, instead of preventing notification pop-ups, it decides to mute the volume entirely on the device instead. If that happens, some Android skins also have custom game launchers or game tools, where you might be able to find a function that disables notification pop-ups while you're in-game. Be sure to look out for such function. Next, you want to disable anything that takes you out of the game. If your device has any sort of multi-finger gestures, you want to go ahead and turn those off. Not all devices have features like this, but in your device settings, try searching the word gesture or touch, and find any setting that has anything to do with swiping, using more than two fingers, or touching the screen, and turn them off. For Samsung devices, this means turning off features like palm swipe to capture, swipe for pop-up view and split screen, and one-handed mode. To prevent yourself from swiping out of the game, I recommend switching to navigation buttons instead. These buttons will be moved out of the way to the right side of your device in landscape mode. Though, some tablets may still have buttons on the bottom. So if you still tend to swipe out of or exit the game on accident, you may want to go into the settings and find something along the lines of App Pin. By turning this feature on, this will allow your device to stay locked into the game. 
Once it's pinned, you can exit the app with the key combination mentioned in the instructions. To improve touch response on the display, some devices might also have something along the lines of increasing touch sensitivity. Turn this on if you can, especially if you have a screen protector. Next up, let's talk about performance. Prior to entering the game, in addition to clearing all the apps in the Recents menu, if you look on the top left and see an option regarding background apps, you can check it and get rid of anything that you don't need. If your device has any gaming specific features, it could be good to take advantage of them. Some gaming launchers may have features that improve performance or prevent interruptions such as notifications and navigation gestures. If you see any features that mention any sort of audio enhancement, make sure to turn those off, as audio enhancement features add extra latency to your device that you do not want to have in game. Let's also make sure to perform some maintenance on your device. For example, you want to get rid of any apps that you don't need. You can press and hold on an app, then press uninstall or disable. If you go to your apps list in the device settings, you can also go through each app and see which apps you don't need. Some Android devices might also have some sort of optimization feature. On Samsung devices, for example, you have device care, and you can try pressing the optimize button. I personally haven't found this to guarantee better performance, but you might as well take advantage of it. In the settings, you want to search for RAM, and if you see anything along the lines of RAM Plus, RAM Expansion, or Virtual RAM, you want to turn it off or keep the amount as small as possible. This feature uses your device's internal storage to store apps that cannot be held in RAM, and doing so will not only wear down your internal storage, but it can also hurt your performance and decrease battery life, so it is best to leave this feature turned off if possible. Otherwise, you can leave it at the lowest allowed option. If you have developer mode enabled, you can also enable show touches. This can be useful in making sure your taps are working or to show your taps in screen recordings. I do not recommend downloading any performance or game boosting apps on the Play Store. Not only do these apps take up more resources to run on your phone, these apps may also do more harm than good. These game boosters usually go through all your apps and force closes them. But this does not mean that the apps won't just start in the background, which may hurt performance and battery life. These apps could also stop important notifications from coming in. But what I do recommend are these apps. If you want to practice and play custom charts for various rhythm games, you should definitely download Sonalus. I have a guide on how to install and set it up, so be sure to check it out after this one. You can also try out Sound Game Training where you can load a YouTube video or screen recording into the app, then practice any chart that you want at any speed with rewinds. If you want to try region-locked rhythm games, such as the Japanese version of Project Sekai, you can download either TapTap or Koo App. You can also check out this app called Demo Cover. This app allows you to add an overlay over your game, which allows you to block parts of a chart's lane to increase readability. This app is extremely customizable and fits for a wide variety of games. I recommend it if your game does not support a feature like this natively. A little disclaimer for the next app. This app attempts to modify your device's resolution. If you do want to proceed, please do so with caution. If you have a large tablet and find your screen to be way too big, you might also find pixels to be quite useful. This app allows you to change the resolution and aspect ratio of your entire device, and in scenarios where you find yourself reaching a bit too far because of a big display, you can use this app to shrink your screen to make your game a bit more comfortable to play on. You will need a computer and access to the terminal or command prompt to use this app, so I will be sure to leave the required resources and instructions in the description. I like to have my Samsung screen match my iPad screen, so I just searched up the display resolution of an iPad Pro, and then with this app, I typed in the exact resolution, press preview, and if you see the resolution change with black borders on the side, this means that you did something right. You can apply it afterwards. You should also restart the game each time you change your resolution to ensure that the game scales properly. Once I enter the game, it'll be significantly easier to reach than before. To change your resolution back, you want to press Reset Resolution and DPI. Let's talk about some Samsung-specific settings. Some Android devices might also be able to take advantage of similar features through built-in software or apps. If you have button navigation on a Samsung device, you can disable the buttons completely. 
While in game, swipe from the bottom then tap and hold this button on the bottom right hand corner. In the set of options, you want to go ahead and select navigation button lock. By doing this, when you tap this button, the bottom bar will be out of the way until you re-enable it. In Samsung's game launcher, you also want to go ahead and turn on alternate performance management. A couple years back, Samsung devices were notorious for significantly decreasing performance with the Game Optimization Service. This feature makes it so that the game bypasses the Game Optimization Service and allows it to run at its full potential. While you're in-game, you might also want to consider turning off Priority Mode. I found this feature to increase audio latency for some reason, so having this feature off usually gives me much better results. I also have Auto Manage Performance turned off in the chance that this device begins to throttle. If you would still like to improve your game's performance, you can also download game plugins in the Galaxy Store. With this app, you are able to customize what resolution and frame rate you want your game to run at. I personally never really found this feature to make too much of an impact, but it could help on some lower end devices. You can customize this feature so that your game runs at the maximum frame rate, and you can change the resolution of your game however you see fit. If you have developer mode enabled in the settings, you can also turn on GPU Watch to keep track of your game's FPS. You should also take advantage of modes and routines. This app lets you run custom automations. I like to set a rhythm game specific routine, where after selecting all the rhythm games that I play, I can have the device turn on or off specific settings. It can also revert these settings back to their original state after you exit the game. It's a pretty neat feature, and I found it especially handy to set custom routines for different games, so do be sure to check out this app and its features if you have the chance. If you have One UI 5 or higher, definitely take a look at GoodLock, and try the Registar plugin. Most Android tablets have their power and volume buttons right next to each other, which makes it very difficult to take a screenshot consistently. With Registar, you are able to program your power button to do a certain action. Instead of pressing volume down and power to take a screenshot, I can now hold down the power button for the screenshot. That's about everything that I have. If you have some extra settings, features, and apps that you would like to share, do leave them in the comments below. I hope you were able to get your device set up and well optimized for rhythm games. If you learned something today, do leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask in the comments. Thanks for watching, and until next time.